Hare Krishna. Very happy and grateful to be amidst all of you all here today. Thank you for coming. And hopefully what you're going to hear in the next one hour or so is going to really help you in many aspects of your life. So, before I begin speaking, I'll tell you an experience I had a um, couple of months back. I know one young boy who, um, I know him for like last many years. Um, I happened to go to his house a couple of months back. So this guy was, you know, chilling at home. He finished his exams and he had a few weeks of break. And the day I reached his house, that was the first day of his break. And uh, his father got him the latest PS. And uh, he also got the latest game. I don't know the name of the game. Something like... Uh, I don't know, but anyway, it was some killing game basically, you know. So this guy, he was excited to show me the game. I said, Tika, show me. It was some Greek, uh, you know, mythology game basically. Huh? God of what? God of? God of war. Yeah, yeah. The latest one he had it, you know. So um, I was in, in, intrigued to, you know, find out what this is and you know, what's the obsession about and I and, I, and he, he showed me the whole game you know, for some time. I was like sitting with him for like half an hour. He was absorbed in it. So I reached, uh, you know, at about 12 o'clock to his house and then he showed me the game for like 15-20 minutes. I was with him then I went to my room. Uh, I did some work, came down for lunch at 2 o'clock. He was still playing there. And then I had my lunch, you know, he, we ate together. Then he went back to play. I went back to do my work. I came down at 6 o'clock. He was still playing there, you know. Then I went for a program. I came back at 9, 30, 10. He was still playing there. Then I went to sleep. I came back down at 5 o'clock in the morning. He was still playing there. I said, wow, what capacity to play, you know. Literally, for almost like 15, 16 hours, he was like, on it constantly and uh, the interesting part was he had his sofa legs stretched over the sofa blanket drawn on him you know and a full AC blown and he was a big television in front of him and he was playing and when I came four five hours later same pose technically in the Vedic scriptures this is called Samadhi <laughs> When somebody is exactly in the same pose and absolutely not moving for a second, you know. I was amazed what capacity this guy has, you know. I asked him a simple question. I asked him, why do you play this game? He started thinking for a moment. He said, nobody ever asked me this question. Everyone asked me how to play the game well. I was the first person who asked him why you're playing the game. He got confused for a moment, you know. Then he actually started thinking for some time, why I'm playing this game? You know? The interesting part about life is that many times we ask the wrong, wrong question for the wrong thing. When it comes to spirituality, people generally ask why to practice spirituality, right? And when it comes to playing a video game, people generally ask, how to play the video game? I simply tell them reverse the questions. When it comes to spirituality, you should ask how to practice spirituality, you know, how to chant, how to practice. And when it comes to video games, just ask why to play? You actually get amazing difference of thought process when you do that. So today, I'm going to share with you all some really simple and uh, some things that will be thought provoking for y'all. Um, and what I'm going to share with y'all will help you in many aspects of your life. I'm going to give y'all some very simple tips and thoughts that will help you think a little deeper in your life. So I wrote this book called Plug Into Happiness. 
This is a book that I highly recommend all of you all to read. This book and there's another book called Open Eye Meditations. Must for every youngster to have. So in this book, I talk about how you can be happy in life. Everyone's looking for happiness. But somehow, you know, we feel miserable. In my so many years of interacting with youngsters, I'm yet to find a happy youngster. Children are very happy. M- most youth are frustrated. They have some reason to be miserable, you know. Either exams, teachers, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know. Some reason to be frustrated. You don't have the latest gadget my friend has. There are hundred reasons to be sad and, uh, and frustrated, right? So I'm going to share with you all some very simple tips how you can be happy in life. And these are uh, very simple things when I share with them to you. But if you practice them and if you live based on these things, it will really help you in your life. All ready for it? Okay. And at the end of the end, I'm going to, I'm going to speak for maybe about half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. And then after that, we'll have ample time for discussions. So I want all of you to feel free to ask questions and no matter how silly the questions are, how stupid the questions are in these four walls, you won't be judged. Okay. You can feel free to ask any question you want and you can feel free to ask any question that you have always wanted to ask, especially from the point of your spirituality, from, from the point of your, your own lives, you know, what your struggles are, etc. Okay. Um, there is something called the, f- the, the quotients of life. If you want to be happy in your life, you need to live a life of balance. There are four or five quotients that you need to learn to balance. And I'm going to share a very simple tip on how you can enhance that particular quotient of your life. Okay. Let me begin with something known as physical quotient. I'm sure all of you all uh, do some type of exercise, isn't it? Um, anyone here? Okay. How many of you all do a little bit of exercise, walking, some kind of gymming, running, sports, any kind of exercise, something you'll do, right? That's wonderful. Very good. Those who are not doing, please do something. Um, so physical quotient essentially is a couple of things. I'm sure people will tell you that you should exercise, you should gym, you should do all that. And I'm sure all of you are doing that. I'm sure that all of you are eating properly. Youth is a time when you feel really hungry. I remember when I was in your age, I used to feel hungry all the time, literally. And my mother would go crazy, you know, f- uh, feeding me. She would ask what's going on, you know, you have like some kind of a demon inside your stomach. You know? So that's good. So that gets taken care of, you know. Your eating gets taken care, your gymming exercise, uh, ex- that gets taken care. But there's one more thing that I want to talk to you all about which probably nobody talks to you all about and probably y'all don't focus on. Okay. And this is sleep. My question to all of y'all is, okay, let me first explain the concept of sleep that I'm going to talk to y'all about. And then I'll ask y'all some questions. Okay. Um, Very recently I read a book on sleep and this book literally woke me up. It literally shook me up. You know, Over the last uh, 15, 20 years, I would say from 2003, you know, onwards, all the way till 2017, which is almost like 13, 14 years, isn't it? I, not even 17, yeah, I would say 2017, 18, almost 14 to 15 years, I literally slept four to five hours a day. That's all. I've been sleeping for years and years like that. But in the last few years, I realized I made a big mistake in my life by sleeping less. And I'm going to share with you all some really important things that you need to know at this age in your life. If I had known this at that that age in my life, I would have lived my life differently. But now that, you know, I'm giving the opportunity for you all to uh, learn this, please do understand this carefully. So for you to have good sleep, there are two factors that are very crucial and important. The first factor is uh, uh, called sleep pressure. It's called sleep pressure. As soon as you wake up in the morning, 
there is a chemical that gets released in your mind and this chemical it gets it's like a small dropper it, at every moment this chemical increases and increases and increases and increases and say 10 hours down the line you know 10 12 hours after you wake up you feel an irresistible desire to sleep right that's called sleep pressure every human being has to experience sleep pressure and if you experience it at the right time every day you will go to sleep immediately okay so this is a very important factor for going to sleep and the second very important factor that is needed to go to sleep is something known as sleep rhythm it's called the sleep cycle it's also called the uh, circadian rhythm it's a 24 hours body clock so that means this particular rhythm at the exact time every year, every day it inspires you to sleep basically okay and all of us experience it at some point or the time or the other and the same rhythm helps you wake up also in the morning there are some people that wake up without an alarm at a particular time right i'm sure all of you have experienced it so this is known as circadian rhythm these two are the most important factors for you to go to sleep unfortunately a lot of people play with this rhythm and a lot of people play with that sleep pressure you know how people play with the sleep pressure there is a very important drug that all of us consume on a regular basis it's called coffee you drink one cup of coffee it pauses your uh, that chemical that gets released for increasing the sleep pressure it mutes it it's like you're hearing a song and suddenly the song gets muted right and it mutes that that uh, chemical from being released for 5 to 6 hours so that means you know you are if you have coffee at 5 o'clock in the evening then for 6 hours your that chemical being secreted is muted till 12 o'clock in the night no sign of sleep and then a the second thing that mutes your uh, sleep pressure and you know the whole cycle of sleep is blue light that comes from your phone and specially when the blue light comes in a dark atmo- atmosphere it mutes I, i'm not even going to ask how many of you all use the phone after you switch off the light i know the answer you know <laughs> so when you use the phone after the light is switched off in a dark atmosphere you're actually bombarding your senses with daylight literally so for your mind it's almost as if it isn't day so the mind gets super confused whether i'm awake whether i'm supposed to sleep whether it is day whether it is night the combination of coffee and combination of blue light is deadly the result is what we know now know as insomnia i am not even going to ask how many of you all don't get sleep properly at night i am assuming that half of you all are following that cycle basically so many people today i am seeing so many youngsters today sleep at 11 12 1 2 3 common isn't it very common to sleep at 1 2 ayurveda gives a very interesting uh, cycle interesting uh, understanding of how sleep works i according to ayurveda 9 to 12 pm these 3 hours of sleep is equivalent to 6 hours of rest so 9 to 12 if you sleep in this 3 hours your body is getting 6 hours of rest and if you sleep between 12 to 3 those 3 hours your body is getting 3 hours of rest 1 hour equal to 1 hour and 3 to 6 if you sleep your body is getting half hour of rest of for every hour that means 3 to 6 you actually getting 1 and 1/2 hours of sleep and 6 onwards doesn't count only as sleep so now you calculate for yourself how many hours your body is actually getting rest ideally for a human being we need 7 to 8 hours of good quality sleep every day why you need that good quality sleep 
so that your brains are most active an active brains an active mind is important for being creative for being innovative for being um quick in your thinking for being alert in your actions for every single thing that you can think of it has it is directly connected to your sleep and unfortunately this is something nobody talks about now let me tell you something called as micro sleep i want to explain to you a phenomena and i'm sure many of you all would have experienced it in your life this is a phenomena called micro sleep you know what's micro sleep micro sleep is a phenomena by which for a split second for a one or two seconds your body shuts down involuntarily you may be driving a car thak for one second you you go to sleep you don't even realize it just go to sleep for one second you may be attending a lecture and in the middle of the lecture thak one second sh- all system shut you may be talking to someone in the middle of a conversation you can experience a micro sleep you may be eating food while eating food in the middle of your food you can go to sleep for one second this is called micro sleep i'll tell you the power of micro sleep there are more road accidents and more deaths that are caused due to micro sleep than due to dr- drunk driving you see all boards all, all around bombay don't drink and drive and all that have you ever seen a board around bombay that uh, that says sleep enough and drive more accidents are caused due to micro sleep than due to drunk driving now one is the damage that micro sleep causes but it all the loss that it causes in terms of innovation and creativity is unlimited when you want an idea the most you don't get the idea why one of it is because of lack of sleep so imagine the loss that lack of sleep is causing from an economic point of view from your career point of view from your ability to recall point of view it's phenomenal amount so approximately so when there was a, a survey done in america for employees uh, what is the loss that this factor of lack of proper sleep is causing to organizations they found the loss to be something in the tune of about 50 million dollars lack of sleep causing now tell me how many of you all here have experienced micro sleep in your life just put up your hand good it's of i i tell you i was driving once i was driving a car once and right in the middle of a highway my my entire body shut down for a second i know what i did i pressed the brake right in the middle of a highway and luckily you know i i i got saved i didn't get into a major accident but somebody did bang into us but the point is that that micro sleep is such a deadly thing you don't even realize what you're doing so my suggestion to all of you all is that please don't neglect your sleep please don't neglect your sleep your parents might be sounding stupid to tell you to sleep early your fr- you know your the all the adults might sound stupid to tell you to sleep early but you think about it for yourself do you want to reach a situation where your body automatically shuts down when you don't want it to shut down and lose you know so much in the process and not just that look at the amount it affects you creatively look at the amount it affects your you know uh, your, your ability to be imaginative innovative etc so for physical quotient my suggestion to all of you all is that spend enough time sleeping i'm not i'm not defining what time you should sleep and what time you should not so that's not my point but please understand how important sleep it is sleep is for your body the more we sleep actually our brain gets rejuvenated energized and it secretes the right chemicals for us to think properly to process things properly 
and to remain happy in life okay and by the way sleep affects the quality of your relationships also those who don't have good sleep don't have good relationships in life so if you think why you're getting irritated so much maybe it is not connected with you know the person but it is connected with your sleep right the ability to handle emotions is much better if you have good quality sleep so this is my humble request to you all as far as physical quotient is concerned i'm not talking about diet i'm not talking about exercise that you all are good at but i'm talking about something that you may not think it is important for you at this point in your life but please remember and try to find a way in which you can actually sleep better if you want more on this subject you should read a book called why we sleep it has phenomenal scientific research on sleep okay next let me talk to you about um emotional quotient emotions are everything isn't it everything we do in life is is connected with the with the way our emotions are the way our emotions work and uh, emotions are uh, fin- uh, foundational to uh, our lives so i'm going to give you all some very simple thoughts on how you can build your emotional quotient um what i'm going to share with you will help you in your relationships uh, will will help you develop a relationship not only with others but a relationship with yourself um those who are emotionally stable people they are the ones who can actually contribute the best in fact most leaderships or most organizations in the world today when they hire people they don't just look at your iq uh, before in the previous 10 years before maybe uh, when they would hire people they would look at iq of a person aptitude and but today they don't look at only iq they look at eq also and i'll tell you my experience of dealing with youngsters and their eq levels you know when i was uh, uh in bangalore i used to preach to a lot of um youngsters from indian institute of science iisc iisc is like literally above uh, iits in many uh, many aspects and um i noticed something amazing about these youngsters super intelligent guys gate rank below 20 imagine gate rank below 20 is not a joke isn't it but so many of them when they would get jobs in regular organizations and companies they would not be able to work with each other they would not be able to work in a team alone they were superb give them any task they'll do it quickly but you put them in a team gone big mess i always wondered what is this going on you know why are these guys behaving like this such intelligent guys so much smartness so much intelligence but why they're not able to get along with each other and i came across so many people like that who were like behaving strange you know with 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 each other and all intelligent people so um i started doing some research and i came across a survey a phenomenal survey this is a this is a, what i'm going to share with you is a result of 25 years of study of human beings and this is not study of just normal human beings this is study of about 300 to 400 of the most highly developed iqs humans that have the most highly developed iqs normal average iq of a human being is about 70 to 90 that's like average that's normal you know so if any of you take an iq test so most of you will fall in that category 70 to 90 basically if you are 90 it's like you're really good but these 300 400 people they caught you know what level of iq they had between 150 to 200 now imagine someone having an iq level of 150 to 200 it's beyond genius you understand is beyond genius they studied 300 to 400 of such people who iq levels beyond 150 and you know what they found out they studied means what not just studied for one day two day they studied them for 25 years 
and they followed them for 25 years this is like the biggest survey ever done and for 25 years they followed these 300 400 people out day in day out they were following and the the end of the survey was fascinating which is what i'm going to share with you all they found out out of these 300 400 people that they surveyed that they studied literally more than half of them never made it in life major failures nothing big they achieved in life imagine having iq level 200 and struggling for daily money not having enough money with you you think it's logical it doesn't make sense isn't it i mean somebody is a genius like this uh, imagine einstein begging on the streets you know that's exactly what's happening with these people and they found out why these guys are not able to do achieve great things and they realized there is a very important factor because of which these people who are not able to make it in life they didn't make it in life you know what the factor is the simple factor was these people who didn't make it in life they didn't get love at home these people who didn't make it in life they didn't get love at home during their formative years and that affected the way they lived their life i'll give you some examples just to help you understand there was one guy genius iq level 200 and after 25 years after after studying this guy they found out this guy is just working in a normal job you know getting a very very basic salary and hardly having anything uh, you know any kind of success in life and they started backtracking his whole life to figure out what exactly went wrong this guy was uh, brought up in the ghettos in very bad uh, shape his uh, father had left his mother and mother was raising him up when he went to school at some point his mother couldn't pay the school fee on time at a particular point you know she couldn't pay the school fee and because she couldn't pay the school fee on time the school told him not to come he stopped going there are so many people in india who don't pay school fee they keep going isn't it what do you do you go and please say please 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 10 times and they will say okay fine you know this guy didn't go back to school then after that somehow or other he studied in some evening school somehow he passed and he came to college while he was in college he he was in such a bad situation financially at home that he had to take up a job to support himself and his job his boss told him that you can't uh, work in so he had a college and he had a job right so the job told him that you can't work in the evening hours you have to come in the daytime only so he had to go to his college and ask the college people that please give me a evening um, batch and i can't come in the morning he somehow just couldn't go and ask and because of which he could not f- complete his college he was a college dropout and then eventually he got a job and all that whatever he happened in his life now i'm i'm just parking this story i'm going to the next story okay I- i'm going to ta- talk about another boy whose iq level is again 150 plus basically but but in a f- but brought up in a family that was very good loving caring family so this the mother and the son they're traveling in a car they're going to a uh, meeting with the principal of the co- of the school and the surveyor the person who is actually doing the survey he is sitting in the same car with them so these surveyors like 25 years they followed them so badly they were sitting in they were traveling in the car they were living in their houses and all that kind of survey the mother is talking to the child and she's asking him what are you going to tell the principal the child says i'm going to say this 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 the mother says no don't say this you should say this instead and the child is asking why i should say this and they're having a conversation about how to talk to the to an authority and eventually they go to the principal and the child very confidently speaks to the principal gives all the answers and gets what he wants now you compare the two what's the difference between the two in the first case intelligence was there second case also intelligence was there second case there was a supportive uh, parent and in the first case there was no one who could help 
him coach him help him deal with others so the the boy who was super intelligent he didn't have an authority figure in his life he didn't have a father that he could actually connect with and make a you know understand how to deal with authorities so whenever in his life he came to a point to deal with some authority he ran away he couldn't handle it so now you tell me to achieve success in your life is only iq important or only iq enough in fact just having iq and not developing a eq is going to be detrimental for your growth so my suggestion to all of you all is that while you invest in your education degrees while you invest in your you know um, st- college and schools and studies and all that you also should invest some time in developing social skills in developing skills that will help you all your life the biggest deals the biggest opportunities are not going to come to you on your exam papers the biggest opportunities of your life are going to come to you by talking to people and your ability to talk to people comes only when you are in an environment that is filled with love and affection so please give your parents and your family credit for who you are today because a lot of who you are today is because of the love and affection that you have got at home imagine if you were raised in an atmosphere like this guy was raised what confidence you would have had now in you know being youngsters now you might think your parents are stupid and parents don't understand you and all that but remember whether they are stupid and don't understand you but the love they have given you is is what is going to make you tomorrow okay so i eq is a super important part of your life so don't underestimate the small you know relationships and the small discussions you have with your parents at home they're actually shaping you right so eq means emotional quotient so invest time in developing your emotional quotients the next thing i would like to share with you all is about iq so i kind of spoke a little bit that you should you know uh, be careful about iq but i'm now i'm going to talk to you about the good side and the important side of iq which is also equally important now i had uh, i knew a young boy who uh, finished his uh, degree the day he finished his degree he took a wow he took a wow that i'll never touch a book in my life and he kept the wow all his life imagine and i i'm not sure how many of you all have taken such vows in your life if you have so education formal education gets completed at some point but life education should never get completed every single day you must learn to grow your school and college will teach you how to make a living all the education that you gain from school and college will teach you how to make a living but after that what you study will teach you how to make a life i'm dealing on a daily basis with young boys and girls so many young couples i'm dealing on a daily basis who have made phenomenal in terms of making a living but they have not made a life miserable they are staying with each other fighting like cats and dogs literally and pathetic pathetic level of fighting i often talk about this one couple that came to me many years back husband and wife they were 6 uh, months married and they were on the verge of a divorce i was amazed in 6 months how did they conclude that you can't stay with each other for life they said problem began first day only <clears throat> in the first day they got um, you know married the husband went uh, and to brush his teeth and he pressed the toothpaste from top the wife is telling him why you are pressing from top press the toothpaste from below this will you know this is my style i press from top only yeah. that's where the first fight began now imagine what do you call this strange isn't it they all they know how to make a living they are all earning you know literally uh, lakhs uh, lakhs a month but they don't know how to live a life IQ is not just about developing your intelligence in just one aspect of life it's about so many aspects of life chanakya pandit says that every human being should every day 
learn one verse if you can't learn one verse at least learn half a verse if you can't learn one half a verse at least learn one sentence if you can't learn one sentence at least learn one new word a day what is he talking about he's not talking about only learning sanskrit verses he's talking about learning something in your life on a daily basis there should be some kind of upgradation on a daily basis in your life if you grow on a daily basis you will evolve on a daily basis and evolution is so important for life i'm sure all of you all have licenses now uh, when you go to get a license um when you get a learner's license you put that l board right on a bike or a or a car and uh, i know so many people who just waiting for the 15 days period to remove that l board and throw it you know you hate driving with the l board right but when it comes to driving you can remove the l board at some point you know when you're confident but when it comes to life you should always have a li- l board all life long all life you should be a learner to the extent you are a learner all life long to that extent you will grow and you can contribute also to the best possible way so every one of us need a little bit of help in becoming a better version of ourselves right um i don't know if you have heard of this term term known as alteration tailors you know they these are, it's a it's a species that existed some time back nowadays it doesn't exist but i'll, I'll explain what an alteration tailor is most of you all wear buy ready made clothes isn't it so when you buy a ready made cloth a t-shirt or a pant or anything it fits you but it doesn't fit you perfect you know, like a little bit of little loose a little too tight a little here little there little long little short you know whatever an alteration di- tailor you know what he does he doesn't do too much he just cuts a little bit here he extends a little bit there he does a little bit of alteration and then that very same cloth fits you to perfection and you feel good about wearing it when it fits you to perfection right all of us need an alteration tailor in our, in our life technically these alteration tailors are called coaches they call mentors they call gurus they call guides we all need an alteration coach alteration tailor who can help you cut a little bit here a little bit there you already good but there's a little bit of a little ego here a little you know too much there you know so some small help we need in nipping off some unwanted things here and there and if you have someone in your life that you can go up to walk up to and take guidance from on a regular basis your life will be so much better don't think you can figure out everything on your own every single person needs someone to connect with someone to take guidance from someone to approach someone to consult someone to really help you find those little uh, changes that can make your life which is good better okay the next thing i would like to leave you all with is a little thought on uh, finance um how many of you are already working put up your hand <coughs> okay the others are all students right <coughs> so whether you are working or students this tip that i'm going to share with you all is a very important tip and it will help you in your uh, journey of life now this tip is based on a discussion between lakshmi devi and rukmini In the mahabharata is a beautiful discussion between lakshmi and rukmini lakshmi is the goddess of fortune right the finance minister of the world you know so lakshmi devi and rukmini having a discussion on rukmini is asking lakshmi how to make money and how to keep money so if anyone can give you advice on finance who better than lakshmi devi to give advice <laughs> and lakshmi devi give devi gives many interesting uh, things that as advice i am going to share of the many things that she speaks i am going to share three things that you should remember as far as money is concerned and these three things that i'm going to share with you all are phenomenal tips and i don't think you will get them in any mba courses you will not get them in any mba books and books on finances and these are straight 
three different thoughts given by Lakshmi Devi to Rukmini on how to earn money and how to keep money. The first thing she tells is, if anyone wants to make money, they have to work hard. In today's world of shortcuts, people want to make quick buck quickly, isn't it? They don't want to work hard. So she says, if you really want to earn Lakshmi, you need to put in efforts and be dynamic. <clears throat> Lakshmi says, I do not stay with lazy people. So, if all of you are looking at being uh, uh, rich and famous and being successful in your life, please buck up. Get rid of laziness and procrastination. They are your biggest enemies to success. And I'll tell you, every one of you have great potential in your life. But the problem is laziness and procrastination. Everyone knows how to do things. But somewhere, there's a certain amount of lethargy and laziness that comes in that doesn't give you that energy to go and work hard. You have all the books in the world, but the effort to study you have to put, right? You have all the opportunities in the world, you get the best of jobs, but after the, you get the job, you have to work hard, isn't it? You're doing a business, but the business can be done in a very lazy way, it can be done in a very dynamic and enthusiastic way. So it depends on you. That's the first thing Lakshmi speaks. The second thing Lakshmi speaks about, she says, I remain with those that work according to their skill set. That means, just don't compare yourself with somebody else and do what somebody else is doing. Find out what your core strength is and work according to that. So, of course, Krishna says this in, in the Gita also. It's better to do your, you know, something that is according to your propensity imperfectly, rather than doing somebody else's propensity perfectly, you know. In today's world of Instagram, it is so easy to compare what somebody else is doing. It's like peeping into somebody else's window, you know. Before, if you want to find out what somebody else is doing, you have to take so much trouble, isn't it? Go to their house, go to their office, and then ask 100 questions, then you will figure out what the fellow is doing. Now you have to just peep into your phone, you get to know what the other fellow is doing. The more you peep into other people's lives, the more frustrated your life will be. Stop peeping into other people's lives. Focus on your strength. Focus on your life. Get a hold of what your ability is. Simply if you do that, you can become very successful in your life. And the third thing the Lakshmi speaks about, she says, I remain stable in that person's life who has Narayan with him. Lakshmi is called Chanchala. She is very unstable. But the only time she becomes stable is when somebody has worships Lakshmi and Narayan. What is Narayan? Narayan obviously is the Supreme Lord. But Narayan also represents principles in life. There are two ways to earn money. One is earn money without principles and second is to earn money with principles. As you go ahead in your life, you will find both opportunities coming your way. You will be able to earn a lot of money without by breaking some principles, making some compromises, you know, bending some rules or you can make a lot of money by not doing that. By following principles, you have to choose. I remember when I was a lawyer, a patent lawyer, whenever clients would come to our office, the first thing we would ask them is, what do you want as end result? Whatever the end result, they will twist all laws to suit, you know, and you get the result. So there are, there are so many ways, there are laws and there are bylaws. There are good ways to make money and then there are you know, twisted ways of making money. And as you go ahead in your life, all of you will get opportunities for both. The ability to stand up and say, no, I will not do this, takes a lot of substance. 
it takes a lot of substance a lot of substance and when you say no so see one is to get lakshmi second is to retain lakshmi there are many people who become rich quickly but whether they can retain that wealth or no that is a big question isn't it there are so many people that get money quickly and they lose money also quickly so lakshmi is giving us a tip over here how to retain her getting her she told the first two things i spoke about but retaining her requires character so my suggestion to all of you all is that please remember the narayan factor to retain money so if you want to retain money remember that you need to follow some principles in your life and those principles will really help you retain wealth okay and the last thing that i would like to leave you all with is spiritual quotient so uh, what is what exactly is spiritual quotient spiritual quotient is um going a little deeper into your life and asking the why questions so we we know how and what very well but we should simply know why simply ask yourself a few very important questions in your personal day to day life all of you uh, want to become successful in your careers want to become successful in your jobs and in your occupation in in life isn't it that's called public victory you know what is public victory public victory means what world thinks about you right we are all conscious of what the world thinks about you that's why i want to use the best phone i want to use the best cars i want to use the best gadgets uh, you know it's i want to use the best brands it's so the more you use all these brands the more people the world thinks that you are successful isn't it to use a particular type of brand to buy a particular type of brand you need to have a certain amount of uh, buying power so a lot of people in this world keep buying keep getting things from the point of view of impressing others which is what is called public victory public victory is very important but the problem in public victory is that the game keeps changing so what is success what is the definition of success from a public victory point of view the definition of success is um i buy what i want whenever i want but when you define success based on these external factors like say for example um somebody thinks being successful is getting a e class mercedes benz and you work like mad acquire 90 lakh rupees and go and buy a e class mercedes benz the day you buy that car a new car gets launched now your definition of success has changed how many people have you know iphone 14 today next year they are going to be in trouble isn't it on the, the moment the new one comes then you you become irrelevant you know you are not successful anymore then you have to work hard to get the next one and then the day you get that new one comes in the market so this definition of success which is based on the external point of view it is an ever changing definition and never at no point in time you can say that i am successful because the day you say that the the symbol of success changes so while you should focus on that public victory you should also try start focusing on what is known as private victory private victory means so public victory is what the world thinks about me private victory is what i think about myself a lot of people the world thinks they are wonderful but they think about themselves they can't even look at them, themselves in the mirror because they are ashamed of themselves because they know exactly what they have done to get what they what they have got isn't it so all of us should spend some time trying to achieve private victory what is private victory it's a very simple thing how successful you are depends on how many things you have that money can't buy what are the things money can't buy huh happiness, happiness. what else love. love what else satisfaction. satisfaction peace of mind huh peace what else good health what else mental health good sleep family relationships isn't it? these are things that the money can't buy so 
while you achieve all those things that money can buy also try to achieve something that money can't buy the combination of the two is what is real success and that's what spirituality is about spirituality simply means not only investing in externals but also investing in internals spirituality means being successful externally and being successful internally so spirituality is not some vague mumbo jumbo thing it's not it's not religion it's a way of life it's a lifestyle it's a thought process it's a way of looking at the world so what we are doing here in unbound is help you break free from all the patterns of the world has installed in your mind the world has bound you with some way of thinking here in unbound we are trying to make all of you unbounders go beyond the binding that the world is pushing you into and become unbound think differently think interestingly think long term don't get stuck with the, with the, with the way the world is trying to program you don't get stuck with the way the world is trying to push you towards have the guts to stand up and assert yourself today the most successful people are those who 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 think different who do different and who are happy to be different don't follow the herd make your own path welcome to the unbounders and i'm very very happy to be with all of y'all if anybody has any questions comments discussions you're most happy now please feel free anybody has anything to ask yes you can just tell your name and can ask a question good evening my name is jeet jain uh, i basically i am studying in uh, 12 i've just completed it like uh, my boards have just finished so when i entered 11th like before before the entering 11th i used to be a kid who who always wants to think different who always wants to be creative who always wants to uh, think differently from others and try to create something and i have that motiv i had that motivation when i was a kid that i want to be different i don't want to just follow herd like my family members does what my family expect is to have a good job settle yourself in but always i think is that uh, i i want to create my own legacy but as i entered level my studies uh, grew bigger my, my studies uh, was uh, more difficult yeah it it grew more difficult so suddenly all that creativity all that thoughtfulness all that kid had in before 10th that i have to create my own legacy have just changed like i i just basically uh, when i try to meditate i try to meditate in morning but suddenly if i just close my eyes and all i think is i have that work left i am my exams coming right now what shall i do uh first thing is m- my suggestion to you is two things i would uh, leave with you as a suggestions first thing is for that creative side of you to be expressed even in your busy schedules find little amount of time on a daily basis even if it is 5 to 10 minutes so if there's a particular creative way that you would like to express yourself whether it is music dance you know uh, some kind of art or writing whatever creative way you like to express yourself find 10 minutes for it on a daily basis which means for those 10 minutes you might have to make some sacrifice you can sacrifice your whatsapp time you can sacrifice your playstation time some time you sacrifice and you will find 10 minutes not it's not a big deal the second thing is that you first need to acquire a basic uh degree or a basic type of thing so what happens is in today's world which is a very complicated world we are in uh not always people get to have their most creative talents as a profession but every person should have multiple streams of income today so while you have you acquire a degree and you get a particular job or a particular uh, business that you are setting up which is a mainstream of income you can also follow a creative passion 
which can eventually become a second stream of income okay so if you don't have you know the first stream of income only and you're only focusing on the second stream of income you will be highly frustrated and people all around you will be highly frustrated because it may not happen it may happen it may not happen right so when you have the first stream of income steadily coming in with your degree with your uh, education and then you can come to a point where you can afford to have a second stream of income coming in through your skills and creativity and at a certain point when you are very confident of the second stream then you can push away the first stream and the second stream can become your main uh, you know source of income basically so till then you should play it intelligently so nurture your talent 10 minutes every day and whenever you get time do it more so whatever you do over a period of almost 10000 hours of practice you become perfect at it so that is that is a number we are looking at you know so that means any skill that you want to cultivate you need to invest 10000 hours of time in that skill to become perfect in it so now usually for 10000 hours it takes up to 10 years of of investment so now for those 10 years of investment for you to for for it to happen you need to plan well in advance so today if you start planning 10 years down the line you will be very good at something if you start planning 10 years down the line then that after that it will take 10 more years to be perfect at something right so my this would be my suggestion go go one step at a time but don't give up your creative ideas creative desires but uh, do it in a very balanced fashion okay thank you we'll take some other question and then come back to you there are more people uh hi prabhu ji i have a question like yes. questions so do you think that one should experience pain suffering loneliness to live a happy peaceful life and second question is ki according to you how do you see a happy peaceful life thank you um i don't see why one should experience pain to to be happy see pain and pleasure are part of life whether you want it or not it will come whether you um you try to experience it or not it will come it's not that you have to go and you know say that please give me pain you know the, the world will anyway give you pain right there are enough people around you that will give you pain so pain is a part of the world's programming basically so don't plan for it when it comes learn to deal with it and um you know pain and pleasure are a cyclic part of life just like now gudi padwa is coming this week right so when gudi padwa is celebrated uh, they usually give a very interesting sweet which is a mixture of methi which is a mixture of neem and gud why that is how life is you can either choose to experience the taste of gud or the bitterness of neem so some people concentrate on the neem part which is so bitter and some people concentrate on the jaggery part which is so sweet you know and some people understand both are going to be a part of life isn't it so um i wouldn't say that you need pain to experience peace i wouldn't say that you need joy only to experience peace you need both the idea is to experience peace in spite of pain and pleasure being around us and being unaffected by the pain and pleasure around us that is what the idea of sita pragya is okay thank you thank you for the question anything else we can pass it here to some of the girls you can ask then we pass it down yeah. hari krishna prabhu ji uh, prabhu ji uh, i have a question that how to tackle overthinking and uh, how to uh, tackle predict a uh, prediction of future uh, result thinking of the future so how to tackle? okay so um the nature of the mind especially in today's time is to overthink that's a part of life um i can tell you that i am an extreme overthinker <laughs> if you think you are an overthinker i am 10 times more than you <laughs> but i only found ways to direct that overthinking you know so if you read my books you will find it is all overthinking only but channelize in the right direction <laughs> so you we need to find ways of channelizing that overthinking usually the nature the natural way the mind does is it channelizes overthinking in the wrong direction in negativity i have over period of time really worked on my overthinking 
really worked on myself to push away the tendency to think negative and focus on uh, constructive positive and important things in life it's not easy but it's not impossible so my suggestion to you is that use overthinking as your strength don't don't allow it to make it a, become a weakness so any time you get a thought that is a prog- uh, regressive in nature that is taking you downwards push it aside and start thinking of the other side of it right so whenever you like say for example you are very sick the mind starts thinking that if i'm so sick what will happen it goes in the ro- in the wrong direction but you stop your thinking there and think from another point of view like i'll give you an example i was once admitted in a hospital many years back i got malaria very bad phase of malaria and uh, four five days i had no option uh, you can pass the mic this side yeah i know that i want the girls to ask first then you can. so um i have was i was admitted four five day i was in the hospital i decided the day i entered the hospital i decided let's see anyway four five days i have to be here and four five days i have i can't do anything else so i said these four five days let me see what i can do to make this experience memorable for myself so every day for those four five days i spent a lot of time reading books which means i planned first only to carry books with me i know i'm going to be in hospital i know i know i'm going to be wasting time on a bed for so many days i took with me a couple of books with me and people were thinking what is this you're planning to go to hospital you're planning to go to library you know but i knew that i'm going to be wasting time there and i used the time constructively and i still remember those days when i think about them and i said wow what amazing days i had you know i got to read all day long so now i could have been miserable on that bed i could have been frustrated how i'm wasting so many days and this and that i would have been miserable but i made it useful basically so that's the way we need to deal with it so overthinking can be a boon or a bane depending on how you use it okay yes <laughs> so um see there are some norms that the world gives you those norms you have to follow there no doubt about can say those norms you have to follow you can't avoid those norms but at the same time within those norms you can make a small path of your own also so it's not that you know we we stop following the norms of the world but within those norms you you carve your own path that's what it means basically so like so there are certain things that uh, you just follow the trends of the world like say for example when it comes to fashion follow the trends of the world but when it comes to principles you stand like a rock there you don't follow the trends of the world you have you, you can set your own path you know so a lot of people think that being part of the world means i'll do whatever everybody says that everybody is going to hell that doesn't mean i also follow isn't it i can follow my own path also to go, reach a different destination so when it comes to certain things especially when it comes to like things like fashion when it comes to same things like uh, certain trends you can follow the trends of the world but when it comes to principles you need to think which you want to follow and which you don't want to follow and that's from the long term point of view of course that's why i'm saying na those norms which are dangerous to follow are principle based that's why i said principle you stand steady like a rock okay yeah hello yeah radhe radhe prabhu ji so my question is like you just uh, elaborate about the how to keep lakshmi with us and uh, way of how to earn the money in that you have told about us three uh, points like work hard and work according to the skill set and follow the narayan's principle so i just want to you to elaborate more about what is the exact principle of narayana so we can follow it okay if it was coming <clears throat> thank you so narayan stands for righteousness narayan stands for dharma narayan stands for doing the right things so like say for example 
if somebody can um, like with one sign the person can earn 15 lakh rupees okay but that one sign will lead to a lot of environmental crisis suppose he is in a ias officer position or some post okay this fellow is saying if you put this one sign over here that uh, one company is ready to give 15 lakh rupees now what is the right thing to do for him personally 15 lakh rupees is important he's probably his child's education can happen through that but from a responsibility point of view it's wrong from a righteousness point of view it's wrong from a dharmic point of view it's wrong so that is what narayan stands for narayan represents your consciousness or you could call it conscience you know uh, which which is very, very uh, which is uh, a very deep seated uh, understanding of the dharmic principles so there will be many choices in your life where you will have to make choices based on what is right and what is wrong <coughs> So that's where we stand by the Narayan principle. That's what it means. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Babaji. Yeah. As mm -hmm. you said, uh, we take coffee so we don't sleep. It totally happens opposite with me. Okay. If I'm going to have coffee, I'm not going to sleep. I like I'm going to sleep earlier, and I try my best to take coffee and study. So it totally goes opposite. And the second thing is I'm not getting focus on my studies. So maybe coffee is having a different effect on you. <laughs> He's making you lose focus on studies. <laughs> See, what I told you is science. Okay. Now your body works differently. Maybe you are from a different planet. I don't know. But normally, coffee leads to, you know, a active mind basically. <clears throat> okay. So um, I'm not saying that you should stop coffee. What I'm trying to tell is that after 5 p.m., don't take coffee. At least at once you stop. basically you take if you want in the morning first half you take till 2 or 3 you can take but after that it's going to be detrimental for your for quality of your sleep that's all um there are so many ways to stay awake you don't necessarily only have to have a caffeine shot to stay awake okay and as it is today's mind doesn't allow you to sleep only basically most people's mind are so overactive and so hyperactive you don't get sleep only So you need to find what works for your body. You need to find what works for your body and mind. If you are not able to focus, means there is some habit in you which is not allowing you to focus. Yeah. That's overthinking. It may be overthinking, but that overthinking is also because of some is due to something. You figure out what habit of yours is leading to overthinking. So sometimes the way we are. So see most of us the way we are programmed the way we our thinking process works our lifestyle works everything works is based on five things the type of music that we hear the type of food we eat the type of movies we watch the type of books we read the type of people we will be hang around with these five determine who you are you be careful who these five are or what these five are you be very choosy about these five then you will find your lifestyle also is better so if you are not careful about the kind of friends you are if if you have friends that are you know all night long awake naturally you will also be awake if you eat food that is uh, you know not going to allow you to sleep not going to allow it's going to be very uh, high energy foods you're not going to get sleep easily because your body your metabolism is going to be very highly active you kind you watch movies that are very disturbing to the mind how are you going to be able to focus your mind will be constantly thinking about all those things all those visuals and all those you know scenes and all that you know if you kind if you watch certain things on instagram or or, or facebook or you, it it keeps your mind very active isn't it so you figure out why your mind is active if you just say i am overthinking that doesn't solve the problem you find out why you are overthinking isn't it as i said these five things all of you all sh must monitor don't just consume just like that don't just consume food just like that don't just consume information just like that don't 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 just consume music just like that think before you consume that's what will make you you know uh, stand apart okay one more question i will take one question at a time uh, some of the boys yes Sorry, he has been waiting thank you 
Can I pass the mic here? Yeah. Good. Pass it. हेलो हाँ सो प्रभु जी लोग कहते हैं कि जो होता है अच्छे के लिए होता है अगर हमें कोई चीज़ नहीं मिल रही तो भगवान ने उसमें हमारे लिए अच्छा रखा है सो गुरु जी माइनिंग इज नवीन और मैंने बी टेक कर रखी है बट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन स्टॉक मार्केट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ फुल टाइम स्टॉक मार्केट ट्रेडर एंड आई हैव बीन थ्री ईयर्स बट आई एम नॉट एबल टू गेट माई डिजायर रिजल्ट एंड आई हैव स्टार्टेड माई यूट्यूब चैनल ऑल्सो सो वट शुड आई डू कि इसके लाइफ में मेरे लिए इसके इससे अच्छा रखा है कि मुझे क्विट कर देना चाहिए ट्रेडिंग ओके और डू आई नीड टू चेंज माई फ्रेंड्स इंजीनियर दे डिसाइड वॉट देट बिकम That is the trend, you know. मतलब पहला कथम शुरुआत होते ही इंजीनियर बन जाते हैं। उसके बाद सोचते हैं मैं क्या करूँ अभी? That's good. You're following the trend of India. I became an engineer, then I became a lawyer. So, so it happens. It happens that your first degree kind of becomes by mistake, you know. No worries. Engineering gives you uh, uh, logical abilities. You can use it all your life. that's the worth of engineering more for most people <clears throat> but uh, as far as your career choice is concerned you have to be a little pragmatic about it you have to be a little practical about it see there are many careers that are now seem to be very trending you know seem to be very um, what do you call it um fun um cool things like that for a career choice you have to think not only from the point of view of coolness but also from the point of view of stability a career can't just be cool it also has to be have bring a lot of stability in your life because for you to live your life happily you need to take up some responsibilities in your life and any responsibility will need a steady stream of income coming in if it is if there's a lot of unpredictability in your income it simply means that there's going to be a lot of anxiety in your life and with that kind of anxiety you can't live a peaceful life you can't live a happy life so that is why i was telling that that person you know navin right your name is jeet uh, you are navin so i was telling jeet that uh, you need to first find one very stable source of income uh, yeah that's fine so whatever it is you find one steady source of income and then you can experiment with another source okay don't experiment with your main source of income your main source of income should be steady and then you can explore your creative sources with time and then you have to be honest about it see what happens any kind of career takes time to set i was telling him what 10000 hours of effort right it takes time to set you can't decide today uh, like i start a career uh, yesterday i start a business yesterday and i said today is not working doesn't work like that it takes 5 to 10 years to decide whether it, something is meant for you or not right for you to become any kind of expert it takes 5 to 10 years if you don't have patience then it will be very difficult for you to grow so be patient first if you love something do it steadily for a period of time and get someone who can give you very clear feedback whether you are meant to be in this or not right i'll give you my own example many years back um so when i finished my engineering i'll tell you how, why i made the shift to patent law you know i finished my engineering and uh, I, i i did electronics and telecommunication engineering i got a job as a uh, you know electronic engineer and uh, i was in charge for one organization for the entire state of goa so i was doing maintenance and equipments everything i was doing for that country, for the state so i was pretty busy one particular day something happened that kind of sh- shook my whole understanding of what i'm supposed to be doing there was one particular place in one company where i had to go and do one maintenance work for one equipment that was installed there i went there 
I knew what the problem was. I knew what the solution was. I had all the tools to solve the problem. But when I was trying to solve the problem, it needed a small soldering. That's all. A very tiny problem. Very simple thing. And in literally five minutes, I could have solved the problem. But my problem was my physical quotient, you know, especially my steadiness of hand is not great. You know, even today, when I put my if I tie a shoelace, I struggle a lot to tie the shoelace. It's a it's a problem that many people have, you know. So my the solder in my hand and this is shaking a little bit. So every time I tried that, it is not working only. So then I started thinking, you know, am I so stupid that I can't do something so small? I I really uh, became quite bewildered and confused. And that night I sat a lot on thought, and then I realized my strength is research. But my weakness is in 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 the uh, in the physical aspect of uh, the career. So I said, uh, so in that company, I learned everything I needed to learn in one or two months. But from the physical point of view, I had some issues, some limitations. So I decided I need to find a path where I can use my research ability in the best possible way. And that's when I found patent law. Patent law is complete research based, and it is complete study, you know, super intellectual base basically. And I loved it. And I thrived in that like anything. I was one of probably India's top uh, hundred uh, patent lawyers at that point in time. So the point I'm trying to tell you is simple. You observe yourself, observe your strengths, observe your weaknesses, and be honest about them. And you, if you, and you ask someone. to help you give get you good feedback about what your capacity is sometimes we tend to overestimate ourselves or underestimate ourselves but someone who is neutral who is intelligent who is also unbiased who is knowledgeable can give you a better idea and can give you a honest idea about it that's why you should do both as i said first select properly according to your strengths and weakness second take guidance third once you do both of these then give yourself time and fourth look at two stream two streams of income one is a steady stream that doesn't shake and then there is an experimental stream that you learn over time basically okay thank you uh yes i think we can take one last question yes bro Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, I am Rishikesh. Uh, Prabhuji, how to be motivated for a longer period of time, uh, like for studying and yeah. everything? See, there are some things that you have to do, and there are some things that you love to do. Um, those things that you have to do will uh, be painful, but you have to do them. and there are something that you love to do and what you love to do there is no pain in it there is fun and pleasure um and there is you don't feel pressurized to do it okay if you can find a job or if you can find a career that is a combination of the two that means what you have to do is also what you love to do then you are sorted then you don't need motivation anymore every day is motivation basically yeah so to find that combination is what takes time but the day you get that combination that's it you don't need motivation from outside i know what i want to do in my life i don't need anybody to motivate me i'll keep doing for the rest of my life now so till you find that it took me i, I probably found what i wanted to do when i was 30 years of age now you may find it much earlier you know but the day you find it that's it you don't need anybody outside to motivate you you will you will keep running on your own that's why for getting that you will need help you will need to think but now uh, i have to get into an engineering college so for that i need motivation <laughs> <laughs> welcome see this is something you have to do do it after that you will find motivation <laughs> 
See, that's what I'm saying, na. What is something you have to do, na? You do it because you have to do it. You have no option. There you suffer, you you know, be happy, whatever. You'll go through all the phases of it, you know. But you do it. But at the same time, start exploring life. See, engineering is not life. Engineering is one part of life, right? Engineering will give you some skill sets that will help you explore life. So don't think that your one degree is going to give you everything in life, right? It, it's just a start point. Most people who finish engineering, after engineering, you have to really become qualified to get into jobs, right? Because engineering just gives you a very basic understanding of uh, engineering. That's why all those who are studying engineering also, please, I recommend all of you to explore other courses that are available. There are hundreds of courses available online. The only thing that prevents you from doing those courses is laziness. Sheer laziness and lethargy. So please go ahead, abandon your laziness and explore. There is so many things you can learn and with that learning you can contribute so much. Okay? So all of y'all, I am really grateful to y'all for coming here and for being a part of this. Uh, hopefully we'll keep meeting more often uh, as much as possible. And I'm really wishing all of y'all a happy um, journey in your careers, your school, colleges and um, in your in your explorations of life. I'm always there for y'all. Please feel free to reach me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. And I'll be happy to help you all with your answers, with your questions and answers. Okay. Thank you.